I made it. <laughs> Hi, you guys. I am on the floor again. <laughs> so, yeah, I, you guys know, some of you that follow me and follow me on Instagram, I've shown how I have let this pile up, um, all these shopping trips, because I just didn't feel like doing a haul video when there were all the fires. And then, you know, I had some friends that were fighting COVID. And I'm like, it's hard to sit here and be all smiley and happy, but some things have calmed down a little bit, right? And it's really piling up. We won't even be able to, to do it all. I mean, it'd be hours. And then, um, you know, of course, at five o'clock, I'm going to go watch Jocelyn and she goes live tonight. So I hope she does. I'm one of her mods. So I'm going to go watch that and see what she found because I saw her Instagram. Did you guys see her Instagram? Charlotte, I think you watch Jocelyn Crazy Lamp Lady, don't you? I think she found a fire and light piece finally. So I'm super excited about that to see it up close. Anyways, let's get back to us. So we'll do as much as we can. And then maybe later tonight or tomorrow, we'll try to finish. I'll try to like cherry pick the money makers and like just what's more interesting okay bougie and the beast <laughs> that's so funny oh hi danny yeah i saw it on her instagram i know you don't always check instagram i think she did it was in her video too so i went and looked at it i think it's a wine stand which there aren't a lot of them they're a little bit harder to find in the celery color so yeah she was out with dagny so whoop, I'm so happy for her because I'm, I'm having everybody look for it. And so, you know, how Jocelyn is, she can be a little competitive and, you know, wants to have fun with it. And so, yeah, she finally found it just randomly. I think they were at Goodwill in a small town in Pennsylvania. So there you go. Okay. Anyways, does everything look okay? Mm -mm -mm. Very blurry. Um, am I blurry to anybody else? Because it might, Terry, you might need to refresh. I I feel like it looks fine. But you guys tell me if I need to do something and can you hear me okay? Because I'm not using an extra mic. I'm going to use the one that's attached to my camera because I might just pull my camera down and start just like showing you with my hands so that we can get through some of this. Um, looks like the inner connection is a little off. Hmm. Okay, hang on. How's that? A little better? Maybe I touched my camera too much. So bear with me and I'll clean it. Maybe I was touching it too much, y'all, when I was setting up. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, oh, I need to point it down because I'm going to sit. I'm on my knees on the floor. Is that better? It is? You know, I probably got it all blurry <laughs> from touching it and trying to get everything set up because there's too much to do it up in my eBay room again. So I'm in my family room again. Woohoo, you guys. All right, so we better get started. Um, I'll try to peek at the chat every once in a while, okay? Yes, okay. Whew, let's see. I am too old to sit on my knees. Um, oh my gosh. So, you guys, boho stuff is leaning real heavy into um, the macrame and the wicker and the, um, hang on, I don't want to look, I'm going to move this so I, instead of looking at me, I'm looking at the camera. Here we go, sorry. Um, and what else? Oh, the brass is kind of taking a little bit of a revival, right? Although... I haven't sold a lot of it, but other people seem to be doing well. And it's showing up in like um, Instagram and Pinterest under certain hashtags. So some people are kind of reviving that. But anyways, do you remember this bunny basket I showed you? Well, it was still there at half price. So it was a good deal at $3.99. I'm certainly not going to pass it up for $2. Look how huge it is. <laughs> so let me tell you something, too. I've decided to have a booth, okay? So there's some bigger items here that I wouldn't normally buy just for eBay, but I've decided to have a booth. So I think it'll do well, especially, you know, with the holidays coming up, as long as we don't have another shutdown. Now, most places are having an uptick, right? But 
I think places have plans in place now to where we won't have like this big shutdown like we did, you know, earlier this year. So I think I'm going to go for it. Okay. So I like these kind of baskets. I've been buying the more unique baskets. See, nice and thick, right? And for a good price. And I've been buying, um, yeah, just a lot of macrame stuff. So some of it will go on eBay. Like this can go on eBay. And some of it will go in my booth. So good prices on everything. I think I've showed you some of this. A lot of plants. <laughs> Look at this fake cactus. I don't even remember how much that was. I think it was like $3.99. A fake cactus, right? So I've got a lot of plants over there. A lot of macrame. If you've been going thrifting with me, you've seen me um, go through the fake plants a lot. And, you know, I'm just trying to pick out the ones that look the most real. Even if you go to Hobby Lobby, unless you have a coupon, I was surprised at the price of good fake plants. So another hashtag that I've been following is called... Um, Jungalo and Jungalo style and urban organics because another decorating trend that is kind of um, having a little revival, you know, the hanging plants and plants everywhere. So I've been, as some of you know, working on my own little Jungalo. I'm pointing at what I've got started. And there are some spots in my house that they just don't get a lot of light, especially here in the family room because it's half sunken. So like it's half underground. Um, so in that case, I'm using, um, to fill in and have that really awesome jungle look, I'm using some fake plants. But you want them to look as real as possible. So when I found out how expensive really good looking fake plants are, I started really picking through that section at the thrift store. And um, I'm going to put some of those in my booth. Anyways, let's see. I'm in Denver. I don't think I've ever seen macrame. I, you used to like macrame and brass. Like it was like you, nobody wanted it. You couldn't give it away. Now you can't really find it at the thrift store. And the prices are starting to go up at the antique malls already. So I've been grabbing it if it's even halfway decent. Okay, so this kind of falls in line. It's more crochet, but look at this. Somebody made a crochet tissue cover. How awesome is that? How much was that? $1.59. So I'm thinking with that whole decorating trend that someone's going to might want this too. Uh, there was a time we would not have touched anything like this, right? So a little macrame pillow. So bear with me, you guys. This is going to be very casual, okay, as we try to get through some of this. So that's what's going on here. All this, except I want to show you one item that is crazy in case you missed it. Let me get it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me get this, you guys. Some of you might remember this one. I had to get this. $4.99. Let me bring it closer. Somebody made like fake feathers and they did a really good job. And it's a in a beautiful pot. This makes me think of like, I don't know. Um like an 80s or 90s Las Vegas room, hotel room, right? But um, I really love this. Let me see what some of you are saying. Yeah. Hey there. Hi, everybody. I'm just going to keep moving, but I love this. So I don't care if it sells or not. I know you do, Danny. <laughs> you were one of the first to comment on it. Super cool. Look at it again up close. I think they did a good job of making this fabric. There's, they put wires in it. They put a little glitter on it. They painted it. It's just really great. Huge. So let me put that back over here. Okay, so that's all the tap. All this stuff over here is like wicker and baskets and very good looking fake plants. Because again, I was shocked how much that stuff costs at thrift. I mean, like an even Hobby Lobby. I was like, whoa, to get the good stuff. All right, let's get some stuff out of my way so I can actually have a place to boom. 
Mm -hmm. I got some jewelry up. <laughs> I don't know if these are coming across. They look a little light. These are really a really nice emerald green. This is a larger one than most, and it's on a nice piece of wood, too. Let that focus. So with this condition and this size, I'd say this one's probably could resell for closer to 30, 35. I paid five dollars because of the size. I already have a set of orange ones in my vintage display. So I want a, a pair of purple ones. And up here I got two pieces of silver crest. Oh, here's some more depression glass. This was just too good of a deal to pass up. I've got quite a bit of it. Whenever it's super cheap, I go ahead and buy it. This is a pretty pattern, though. I can't remember what it's called. Some of this stuff I have to relook up. But I think this will be for the booth because I've got a bunch of other pieces that match it. Just like some of you saw me do with the, um, the black glass, which I don't, we're not going to go through that. It's in a box over there like what is it two two or three halls ago at that goodwill every time we turned around there was a piece of black ellie smith glass some of it was silver on it too i think that might still be ellie smith and um for like a dollar 59 dollar 99 i just bought it all up it's in the box there and i'll either use it sell it as a lot or put it in my pending booth Anyways, along with this too, okay? So I want to show you something. Let me get it out. Yeah, this is going to be a crazy mess, you guys. There's a couple pieces here I want to show. Then we're going to move it into a box so I can sit on the couch. So, silver crest, right? But look at this one. Look how big this console bowl is. That's really huge. So... I think I paid half price, so about four something. So that's a really, I, I haven't seen this shape very often, but that's nice. Ooh, I am never gonna let it get this crazy before I do a haul video again. And if I do, it might, I might just forget it because this is hard. Hey, these sell. I, I'm going to keep one one of these days, but they sell pretty quickly. These crystalline. I hope that's coming through. Oh, I hope that's coming through. So beautiful. This one is signed. I paid $2.99. Um, it's just a beautiful finish. Let me, I'm so hoping that comes through. Okay, so if you're new, stuff like this, you can definitely buy. I would love to have a vase. I saw one of our YouTube reseller friends find it in a vase, and it's just epic. So we're gonna skip that. We're gonna skip that. So we will be here forever. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love these, you guys. Love those. So speaking of, let's move up to like the '80s. I think this might be 90s, though. Um, this makes me think of Spencer's gift. Literally, it's open, and you can put candy in it, and you don't need any money, and it'll just come out. I haven't decided if I'm going to sell that. I have an addiction to lemon heads. Ever since I was a kid, I still buy them in those um, theater boxes. I might fill it. Oh, my gosh. Audra, is that you? Hello. Hello, girl. I'm glad to see you. Um, it's been a while. I might fill this with lemon heads and keep it. <laughs> so we'll see. And of course, never pass up the rainbow sheets. I've sold quite a few of these. They were featured again on Stranger Things when they went through the 80s. Um, so I don't remember what season that was. These are so nice and crisp still. I think the last one I sold was... Um, about $45, $50 last year. These are Ramsetta. They're still nice and crisp. But even if they're not, I would still buy them. I would still get them. And you just won't get as much money resale. But I've got two queens. So um, some of you probably remember, was it the, yeah, about 
late seventies, early eighties, like the shower curtains and the bedspreads and you could just make it striped or you could make it to where like it went like a rainbow like this. So yeah, that was all the rage, all that kind of stuff. Okay. I saw I picked up some modern mermaids. You guys saw that. I don't know if you remember these. Now these aren't as old as they look, but they're still cool as heck. There's four of them. So I definitely still bought these. These are just a resin. They're not as old as they look. You can see the hardware on the back, but just so adorable, right? So adorable of like, you know, a little repop of that. What, what time frame was that when this was so popular? But they're adorable. The airbrushing on them is still in great shape. So, yeah, not true, true vintage, vintage. Hi, Todd. I was only 80 in the 1970s. <laughs> Are you up from your nap? Awesome. Okay, let's see. Hopefully I can get on the couch and sit down soon. Because I'm too old to be on my knees on the floor. Okay, a bunch of smiley face stuff for my own collection and like to put on stuff that I ship out. Another one of these smiley face Christmas bells. More of the Teleflora vases and mugs. <laughs> now, I do have a real McCoy mug, but I kept that for myself because those are worth, what, $20, $30. Um, but the cheaper ones, I just give out to all my friends. And when I talk, when I talked once about having a, a booth, I want to focus on vases and some art glass and... Um, a wall of smiley faces. I'm going to see if I can convince people by having enough of like just so many of them, even though they're not very expensive and maybe sell them for like $5 a piece to see if I can convince people um, you need a smiley mug in your life. So I think I can do it. I think it'll be cute. So I'm thinking for the booth, I'm going to niche down to like four or five kinds of displays. So, all right, let's see. <laughs> yeah, Danny and I shop a lot alike, like, um, you know, art glass, um, cute stuff, a little bit of kitschy stuff, and we're not afraid of modern stuff either. So, um, you know, I mean, I, I've learned a lot about vintage since I took a deeper dive into it, but I'm not afraid of the modern stuff either. I know some of the names that sell well, and Danny does too, so... <laughs> yeah, at least buy one for yourself. There's, there, you'll find one sooner or later, either the mug section or something at the thrift store. This just, they're just so cute. Okay, Goofitt's glass. Now, normally I don't buy this, and you're lucky to even find some where the gold's not all messed up. Surprisingly, the gold's in good shape on this, that flash painting. Um, but still, I usually don't pick it up but what i like about this one is see how it's on the opalescent almost like i don't know who made this one but that opalescent reminds me of like my fostoria heirloom but i haven't figured out whose this is yet oh man i hope that's coming through because man it sure does look pretty to me oh that's not helping i wish you got like it looks pretty with the light coming through it to me so I paid $3.99. This will be my first piece. And again, only because, yeah, Moon, is it Moonstone? It's a couple people that do this kind of glass. So I thought this was pretty cute. When you get your booth, I'll come up to see it. Okay, yay. Um, I think I have it narrowed down to which, which um, antique mall I'm going to use. Okay, let me get some of this stuff out of the way so we can keep moving. Okay, what else do I want to show? That, okay, let's do these vases so I can move it out of the way. Let's do art glass and vases. And then I can sit on the couch, right? Hey, I found this the other day. Do you guys remember this? This is from 1979. It's signed Michael Cox. And look, it's etched acrylic or lucite. I hope that's coming through. But it is etched. It is amazing. It is truly amazing. I wish that stuff would, 
how can I get stuff to show as beautiful? I don't know how to get stuff to show as beautiful as it really is. But unfortunately, his stuff doesn't sell for a whole lot. You would think it would, especially this being 1979. Whew, this is just a forest scene with mountains. I may end up just keeping it and putting it on my wall display because it's really only worth about $25. You would think it'd be worth more because like Lucite purses and Lucite furniture, like that stuff sells for big money. Anyways, beautiful. I love it. Beautiful. Let's put things in a box. Okay. And then I found this the other day. Now I'll be able to sit on the couch if I want to. Some of you might have seen me pick this up. This was just a couple hauls ago. $1.99. I didn't even bother to look it up. You know quality when you see it. So that's signed. Alexander, and I think it's a Lily Alexander. And a plate like this is probably worth 40 or 50 bucks, believe it or not. So really pretty. The Siamese is a little bit raised, but it's gorgeous. Somewhat heavy because it's metal with enamel. No chips, thank goodness. So, um, yeah, look at the enamel stuff. You might, we're going to go kind of fast. So some of you that are trying to learn, you might just have to jot these things down and then go look. But you can go look at her stuff. Lots of different enamel stuff, not just plates on eBay right now and see some of the good prices. Okay. So let's put that in there. That is gorgeous. Now I'll be able to get up here. There's some jewelry, you guys. There's some jewelry. Let me show it real quick because I'm going to sit on the couch here in a little bit. This was only $2.99. It's just a piece of glass that someone wrapped, but it was pretty. For that price, that's pretty. That didn't show very well. The artsy crowd likes that kind of stuff. So, But this is pretty cool. These are still popular. These became pretty popular, I noticed, on Poshmark and Pinterest about five years ago. And this one's a chain mail, and I, there's a good chance someone made this. That's really cool. So these are still um, trending. So went ahead and paid $5 for that. It's not like a cheap one from Claire's or anything. This one has some weight and some quality to it. But there's no maker's mark on a dangle or anything. And it just make when I look at the chain mail, it just makes me think someone made this. And then I I bought another one of these, not for the charm. The charm is super cheap, but it was half price, so $250. I wanted this to hang better pendants on because I've been buying some cool silver pendants and I needed something that I, you know, to put it on. And I tend to like these kind of things. But there was something else in here that was super cool. There it is. This is kind of a cool piece, too. Let me get it untangled. My jewelry is really piling up. You know, if you were small enough, you could also use this as a chain belt. But this is really nice. Let me bring it up close. See with all the little strands. Let me see if I can tell what that is. It's not herringbone. So I don't, each kind of chain pattern has its own name. But yeah, if you were small enough, this could be like a dainty little um, chain belt too. Okay, so some more jewelry to add, you know, a couple pieces for me and the rest for resale to add to that ever-growing pile of jewelry upstairs. And yes, I, now I can open this. I showed this, but I didn't want to open it because then I wouldn't be able to buy it. Somebody made this adorable, they put it on a safety pin, but it can just go on a pendant. Oh, that's so cute. Hang on, it's coming. Is that focusing? I hope so. See what somebody did? Isn't that cute? I hope that focused. Oh, it's got a little crown on it too. $1.99, super cute. All right, let's do some of these art glasses and bases. Now, like I just mentioned, when it comes to bases, that's one of my favorite 
you know, niches. That's one of my favorite grooves is the art glass vases. So my husband does buy me flowers every week. It's been that way for eight or nine years, with the exception of a few months this year because of the pandemic. So he would take pictures when he went on walks and send me pictures. <laughs> um, so I have an affinity for vases. And I already have a cabinet full. Sometimes I trade out when I find something better that I'm not going to resell. But my point is, I am successful at selling even modern um, art class bases, even ones that aren't associated with like a big name, such as something like this. Yes. And see how this has, I um, can't remember what that's called these strands of glass added to it. It's huge, it's beautiful. I didn't pay very much, no markings on it, but something like this, um, this will definitely go into the booth, you guys. So I plan on having a wall of just this most gorgeous bases and some kind of marketing sign, like pictures from magazines, some kind of marketing sign that tells people, um, you know, be sure you have some awesome bases. Don't have just those cheap generic bases have awesome bases for your house. So I'm going to try to convince people why they need to, you know, why they should buy something. So let's put that there. That, then I can start to move over. Now this one I'm pretty sure is Viking um, Blue Neek. I was a little thrown off by the edges being um, very squared off and not rounded. But it sure looks like Vikings blue neat color, which I learned from George because I have a piece that's in my wall, a stretch base. So this is a four finger. And I'm pretty sure, I won't say 100%, but I'm like 99% sure this is a um, Viking base. So um, it's not as epic as the one I already have, so I will sell this one. This one too, it's sturdy enough where I'll put it on eBay. I'll probably put this one on eBay. I don't want to put a bunch of really high-end money makers into my booth. And so I feel secure about shoplifting because although I'm good, um, you know, I mean, I started out in the 80s, you know, in flea markets. But they were indoor flea markets only open on the weekend. And we would run them and have employees. Like we'd stock during the week. And then when they were open on the weekend, we would be there and our employees would be there to help people, not just like renting a booth and like, okay, there it all is, you know? So that part freaks me out a little. So I have no intentions of putting like my high end money makers that I know I can sell just fine on eBay, right? Okay, let's see, Audra. Yes, that does have cameras and I will install one too as a deterrent, it'll be you know, a deterrent only. Um, let's see. <laughs> Deanna has a lot of swung bases. Um, an art glass wall will definitely draw people into the booth. Yes. I'm going to try to keep it like themed sections. And then maybe, you know, if, if a section doesn't work, I'll switch it out and try something else. I think I really want to, I've got some marketing vision that of how I want to try it. So, all right. So this one is going to go on eBay. Woohoo, yes, I'm too, oh, I'm on my knees. This is crazy. Now here's a modern one. Some of you saw me get. It's got this sticker that says Made in China on it. It's $2.99. You guys saw me get this not too long ago. I My screen is so small, I have no idea if things are focusing. You have to forgive me. I should turn my TV on so I can tell. But look at the color. And I hope it's coming through, which it is not. I can tell you. This is a greenish, to me it looks blue. This is a greenish teal. And then it's got that thicker stripe in the middle uh, that's more blue. Oh, this is fabulous. This would sell online too, and it's thick enough to ship. But I don't know if I could get that color to come across. But when someone sees this up close, and like in a booth, they're going to be, oh my goodness. That is amazing color. So let's get through those. So here's another one for the booth. Somewhat smooth pontal. This one's pretty too. Darn, these, this is not coming across. $4.99, these colors are not coming across for y'all. You'll just have to trust me. This is blue with like diacroic in the like wave zebra print area. It is awesome. Let me see what Deanna says. 
I look more at art glass than basis since I started watching you. Yeah. But I know you're, yes, yes. Now, and I was scared to death when I first decided to get back into hard goods and add vintage, higher price items. Whoo, I was like, the shipping, yeah. But it's been fine. I've had it in the last year and a half. Yeah, there's been a few broken pieces, but you know, I follow all the rules. I have insurance. I know how to handle the buyers so that I get my pictures first before they get their refund. And then I file a claim and I got paid. So the buyer got their money back. They were made whole. I still got paid what I sold the item for. I still made my money even though the item's broken, right? So now I imagine if you filed every day, maybe UPS would finally say, hey, can you pack things better? But you know, anyways, you guys, oh, I wish you, now that's better from farther away. Beautiful. So this one will probably go in the booth too. It's going to be, you guys, any of you that want to, you'll do that with me, that booth process, because some of you might be interested too, because I've never done anything this way. Okay. So I'll be talking to more people about that have booths. And, you know, getting their tips. I've talked to George, who has booths several places. Tanya, Thrifty Treasures. I'll probably pick Danny's brain. Quite a few people. I'm going to watch. I think Jocelyn, Crazy Lamp Lady, said she's going to go ahead and open up a booth while her store is in progress or process. So hopefully she'll share that process. You know, and I'll get to watch how she does it. But um, I like what I picked. And let's just let that be a separate video, okay, talking about that. And that way people can give me um, tips, too. So let's move on with the basis. Okay. So just another generic, probably made in China, but nice and heavy. And just pretty. Pretty with the blue confetti, ruffle top, right? Just pretty. So that one will be the booth. The Viking so far is the only one I'm going to put online. Um, I've had people go gaga over this, and believe it or not, this is not vintage or anything. Look, right there's the raw sticker, <laughs> the made in China. It's so funny because when I reverse image search this, Joey, hi. <laughs> hey, you guys, there's Joey Bada Bing. Did any of you come watch us on um, Dominic's channel? The other week, he and I went against each other on the thrift battle, and it was close. I thought it was going to be easier. The young man pulled. Whoo, boy, he brought out some fire stuff. It was close. So, hey, Joey. Joey's a mailman, I believe, and he's kind of newish to reselling. But um, fun channel, fun guy, pretty to look at. So go follow Joey. And uh, you can go see our thrift battle. It's still on Dom's channel, Prime Time Treasure Hunter. It was a lot of fun. Okay, anyways, some people have tried to, hi, Claire. Some people have listed and sold this on eBay as vintage. This exact base is so funny. I just thought this is a huge owl. It's beautiful. I like the, um, I don't want to say calico. I'm not sure what to call that print. I don't want to call it calico. But this, some people really like this blue and white. So $3.99, yeah. It's Joey Bada Bing. You know, you used to be able to tap on people's names and get to channels. It's crazy now that you can't do that. Haha, <laughs> there's my husband on my phone sending me flowers, pictures of flowers. And um, this is an FTD. It's not a special collab or anything, but $2.99. I think if you saw it, might have seen me hem and haul about this one, and I finally went back to get it because I just like that pattern. This is textured. That's a very mod pattern. So, yeah, that one's going to go. Let's see, blue onion or blue Danube. Okay. It's, to me, it's just like wallpaper. Like, that looks like wallpaper <laughs> or hotel bedspread. Yeah, because I'm just, that's not my groove as far as my personal decorating taste. And so, you know, that's, these are those kind of things I have to learn. Oh man, my legs fall asleep. Okay. Woo -hoo, I'll be glad to get up on the couch. A couple more bases. Oh man, this is pretty too. I'm going to back up because things seem to look better backed up. Do they? Nice and heavy. 
can't tell if that's cut or just, um, yeah, I think it is cut. It feels pretty sharp. Super heavy. Still has the sticker on it. This label is okay. I, I feel like it should command more money. I'm going to tell you what it is. I don't know if I'll say it right. Caithness, C-A-I-T, no, wait a minute, C-A, oh, I can't read that small. It's on the bottom, too. There we go. Let's do it this way. C-A-I-T-H-ness. I read a lot, but I don't always know how to say things, you guys. Ugh. What's the thrift challenge? Oh, um, Dominique does thrift battles about once every couple months. And I'm going to be starting some myself. You saw that little two-minute clip on my YouTube channel and on Instagram. I've been, I've been wanting to do that forever. And quite a few people through the years have done them. Currently, Dom's doing some thrift battle. The girls at Recycle Life are doing thrift wars. I can't remember what other people have called them throughout the years, but and I've always wanted to do it. So I found them like, well, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna join that bandwagon and do it too. So it'll be once a month thing. The details will be coming, okay? I'm making my thrifty witch queen throne. <laughs> so, anyways, don't know how to pronounce it. But they, yeah, they make other kinds of glass. You would think this was $4.99. I think it was half price. But resale value on it's only about 20 or so. And you would think it would be more. Let's see, because it's handcrafted in Scotland. I mean, come on now. I don't know if you're going to, you're not going to be able to see that little tiny thing. But I like it that no scratches, no chips. It's marked here. It still has the sticker. But I'm undecided. This will probably go in. This will probably just go to the booth because although it has, you know, some good earmarks on it, this brand just, their vases for some reason just don't sell for as much as I think they should. And I'm, I need some impressive items for my booth, right, to attract attention. More than 20, what do you think, Danny, for that one? About 30. I'll have to decide whether to put that, whether to put that, um, in the booth or on eBay. Now this one, I, oh, I'm so stuck on this one. See this frosted on the outside with a little bit of frit feeling, not really, but, and then smooth glass here, swirly yellow. If you can see this, where's my phone? Um, the closest I could find to this, and I, but I, I'm not comfortable saying that's what it is. Where did it go? Okay, I lost it. Hang on, I'm gonna. There it is. The closest I could find is Rosenthal Nether. Let me bring my phone up. See if that will. This vase has a label that says Rosenthal Nether, which is a glass company. Let me show you. And this is, you know, what it looks like. The problem I'm having, though, are measurements and the exact base. So I'm having a little bit of um, problem. <laughs> yeah, Todd, it's snooty glass. So I'm having a little problem because, you know, I want to be careful. I don't want to just guess and, you know, be wrong about the names that I put on stuff. I don't want to be that person. But it's gorgeous. So $4.99. It's heavy enough where if it is a good glass, a Rosenthal Metter or something like that, then I'll put this on eBay. And if not, if it's a copycat or just something generic that looks well, then I will probably put it um, just in the, um, the booth. Let's see. Well, it's glass. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I'm, I don't expect it to be like the perfect measurements. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm aware of that, Audra. So. This is super cool though. Now we can. And this one here, still labeled JL. Really pretty. You see this finish? I wanted to call it riggery, but it's not really riggery. Just kind of pinched thing. And it is, I've got it for us. I've got that, you guys. There it is. I've got two, because I can't say the name. Scandinavian, the JL stands for Jacko 
like Canon. I'm going to show you the name because I'm sure that's not how you say it. So, so let me show you the name. <laughs> so, okay, make it bigger. Okay, let's see if that gets focused. Can you guys see the name yet? There it is. That's what the JL stands for, that J-A-A-K-K-O, whatever. So now this Scandinavian, now this particular piece I think does have a pretty decent resale value. So this will probably go online, this one here, because it's still labeled with, you know, who it is. It's beautiful. And I just don't want to put a bunch of good money makers where they get stolen until I feel comfortable with the booth. Yes, Danny, I do seem to find a lot of nice glass. You know, I, I feel like it's the law of attraction because I love it so much, you know, and I just I just love it so much. And I think they I think it knows I'm gonna buy it and take care of it and find it a good home. So this is a nice piece. I've got it wrapped in a towel. Now I can move this box out of the way. Bring something else over. Yay! Now the other pieces of glass are these. Um, they look like perfume bottles, but they're not. But that's why I picked up the first one. But they're actually oil lamps. Let me find the name. There it is. Lampy Burger. I'm not saying that right, you guys. The name's on there. You can look it up. Lampy Burger. They have resale value even when they're empty. Okay, the people will refill them. This one happens to be marked on the bottom, too. We'll see if that. I don't think it's going to show. So lamp with an E and then burger, E-E, -E, Paris. So they use a little bit better quality glass than these little oil lamps, and they have a following. So, I mean, not huge money, no. But this one more because of the ruby red than this one. So... But worth picking up. They were only a dollar ninety-nine. That one was a dollar ninety-nine, and this was two dollars. So worth picking up. Woo -woo, what do I got now? Enough bases. Let's do art. Oh, <laughs> just this vintage base. <laughs> How do you like that lime green? I'm gonna pull them flowers out and put them in a little baggie, and I'll put them next to this in the booth. They can have them if they want them. But it's the base. It's super cute, and it is by the artist barn. It's called a twin bouquet vase. And this little vintage vase has some resale value. Let me show you this. See how it has these slots? It's got a splatter paint finish, but it's smooth. Anyways, it's got the label. It's got the label on the bottom. So those of you that are new and trying to learn from this, you know, quick haul, huge. You'll just know when you see it, you know, and it's, you know, like me, okay, it's got a label. Look it up real quick. But still, at that price, $1.99, you see the color, and you know that's vintage color. Look at the crazy flowers in it are super vintage plastic flowers. <laughs> so I don't like the flowers, and I think it detracts from some of the base, but I, someone might want those vintage flowers too, so I'm going to keep them all together, okay? <laughs> it's crazy. I cannot find anything out about this. It's been months now. Nobody knows. $1.99. This is resin on the bottom and glass on the top, you guys. Glass. Beautiful glass. I'm trying to show these doves. This is really not resin. It's more like a stone. I, I give up on this, but... It could be vintage. It could not be vintage. Like there are things that make me think that it's vintage, but then I look at it and I'm like, mm, no, and I can't find anything like it. So I'll keep working on it though, but it's really adorable. It was $1.99. So I think, I thought it was just resin at first, but no, it's glass. You can see the clamp marks from their tools. They put a little gold on the tips of these little swirl. Just really cute. And then the little love doves that are some kind of stone, like soap stoning thing. But um, no, nope, nobody understands it either. But I don't care. It's just somebody will buy this. It's just super cute, right? Don't have to be afraid of that kind of stuff. So, okay. Now, this vase here was $1.99. 
I just happen to recognize this. I've sold other pieces and I have more for sale now. And this is a group of, I do not know what the political correct thing is to say anymore. Do I say Eskimo? Do I say native Alaskan? Do I say um, Inuit? Like, I don't know. But this is by Sasha B. It's signed. Let's see if that focuses. Sasha B. The other piece that I still have left that hasn't sold yet is from one of his protégés. It's kind of in the same style. It's a uh, like a little dish. Just say indigenous probably at this point because I don't even know. You know, things have changed on eBay with political correctness right now. So I don't even know, you know, marketing this is going to be a little different. I just want to make sure I don't get in trouble. So, but this has a good name. So really I'm safe because of the name. Um, I'm pretty sure he's Inuit. I'm pretty sure. So super cute. You know what? Let's look that up real quick. What time is it? I think I still got, yeah, I still got two hours before Jocelyn goes. Let's look this up real quick and see where we're at with Sasha B stuff. And then, you know, there were some protégés that kind of learned under this person. Sasha Brastoff. I don't know how to say that like this. I'll show you guys the picture when it comes up. Woohoo, yeah. Okay. Prices are still good. Oh, all kinds of stuff. Wow, I'm going to show you. Hang on, I know. I'm just looking. Okay, yeah. Oh, Matthew Adams, yeah. That's one of his protégés, and I have that I have one of his trays. Okay, there's a lot of stuff, you guys. You'll just have to look it up. There's a lot of stuff. So, um... If any of you are writing things down, hang on there. This one will have the name real big. Okay. There's the name under the plate, how to spell it. Because he does a lot of different styles. Okay, there. If you're, so write that down so you know, because resale value is pretty good on some of this stuff. Because it doesn't cost very much at the, at the store. Oh my gosh, dinner plates and everything. Ashtrays, mid-century modern, and some stuff that looks newer. Okay, cool. So what did I pay for that? $1.99. Yay. That will go online. That will go on eBay. Okay, I'm just going to hold up figurines, you guys. Glass figurines. I haven't looked any of them up except this one I do know is Ellie Smith, okay? This blue one is Ellie Smith. It's a girl with a goose. $2.99 unless it was on sale. That was a recent purchase. I'm just going to look. I haven't looked any of them up. This one's beautiful with the opalescent. You have to trust me. It's a swan. It's got some opalescent, um, like dichroic glass finish to it, paperweight style, but I would call it a figurine. There's something about this that's familiar. It was a dollar ninety-nine. If anybody now or later knows, like recognizes this stuff, drop it in the comments. <laughs> Help a sister out. <laughs> but really cute little glass birds. I mean, when things are like you know two dollars or under i'm just gonna i just get them satin frost little birds no signature so I haven't looked it up yet jocelyn just picked this one up today <laughs> i picked one up a couple weeks ago two dollars no big you know maker or anything but I can sell the figurines too. When you, if you look at my sold history, you can see that. I thought this might be uranium glass, but it's not. Now this one does have a marking on it, so I'll work with this and figure out what it is. Somebody may already know. It says 85, I believe. I thought it was uranium glass, but it does not glow. But it's a pretty kind of opaque, greenish little carousel glass, carousel horse. It's cute. Let's dig out these other ones. 
some Christmas bulbs. These these sell, you guys. This one was a dollar twenty nine. This one with the dichroic, like kind of oil spill like finish, dollar ninety nine. Glass ornaments, beautiful. I just don't really have a problem selling this kind of stuff. Bring it out some more. Now on baskets, I do. Baskets, I do. The only reason, hi, hi. The only reason that I got this one, and this one's even new, like not vintagey vintage. It was half price, so 75 cents. But I just did like, you know, I don't know what that's called yet when it has the lines in it. Okay, it's cased inside, not applied afterwards. So normally I don't love to do the baskets, but 75 cents, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Okay, let me pull over this other art glass. Box full of art glass. Woohoo! $2.99. Is that not the hugest apple with some bully, con bully conte controlled bubbles? And these, this might be something, although there's no signature, because the quality is there and those bubbles look pretty controlled, not all crazy sloppy. So, man, it weighs about six pounds, too. So, this one's really cool. It's got an open space on the inside. I'm not sure what that's called. And then another piece. Now, this is Polish glass, I believe. And this is an oil lamp. This is another oil lamp. Pretty sure this is Poland glass. And I do have the thing that goes in it. But this is beautiful. So the resale value, oh, right there it is, made in Poland. Yeah, it still has the sticker on it. hasn't been used yet. I think the resale value on this is, well, it was over $20. It was over my threshold. I know that. So, again, some of this will be on eBay, just little cheap art glass figurines. None of these are Murano that I'm showing you yet. Okay, none of these are Murano. They could be imported. Now, this one I don't know about. This elephant and a cute kind of modern. That's cute, isn't it? This is just to protect it. So, oh, this is huge and heavy too. So there's another one. Watch. Here it comes. I have a lot of art glass figurines in here, you guys. Okay, and here comes a whale. Made in China. This is Fifth Avenue crystal, made in China. But I don't care. It's huge, it's big it'll sell so we'll see if this stuff goes in the booth or on ebay we'll see and these were half price a dollar these are modern not too vintagey made in china barcode on them but you know with the barcode now it still doesn't mean that it's not leaning towards vintage but look glass flowers Listen, my daughter was with me. We were filming. There was five of them. And I was buying jewelry. And so then I wanted to go around and I wanted to get these. Well, there was a, an older lady and her mom. Yes. No, it's Todd. There was an older lady and her mom. And they were waiting to look at these too. And, but you know, I was already doing jewelry. So I got to look and then she turned around to her daughter. And she goes, oh, she's she gets she's getting them all she was first and i heard her so i laid them all out and i said come here hon and i said pick out you know i said they're half price too they're a dollar pick out the two best ones that you want and so she did i let her pick out the two best ones that she wanted but these are great too so yeah definitely i've seen these for sale for like 15 dollars at antique malls um i almost bought one myself but so a dollar a piece is a great price right you put the wither say all my art glass in here. <laughs> Some of you might remember this one. <laughs> this is like, I don't know, 18 inches tall. It's got a little bit of yellow case, yellow to orange. This fish. I haven't figured it out. I'm pretty sure it's just an import. I don't know, but it's awesome. So one this size probably without not being like Murano or anything. I don't know what it is just yet. It has, to me, it feels like it's, you know, an import from China, so. 
but it's cool and it's pretty epic and some people do not care. So I think this size and weight, I think, uh, I don't know, probably close to 30. I think I can pull for this. We'll see. If not, I'll just keep it. I'm cool with that. Let me put, I'm going to lay it down so it's safe. We're going to switch boxes. Okay. And this one here is modern too. Bullet con tape on it too, you guys, but it's sloppy, but sloppy, not controlled. Okay. So this is, and I think I've seen these at Ross. So, but it's still pretty. It's heavy. It's thick. It's beautiful. Someone will like it with the heart shape, the cased glass inside. You can put a little, it's like a little bud base. So um, I don't remember what I paid for it. I'm sure not much because I wanted to get the sticker off so I could make sure there wasn't a signature underneath. And so I could kind of look at the pontil to see. It is a nice, smooth, polished pontil. So, but, you know, the bubbles, the bully conte, as we say, they're not very nicely done, but it's beautiful. So, okay. This is funny, too. There's a lady... Oh my gosh, there's a lady that has this for like 30 bucks or so, and she's calling it Murano. It's just a candle holder, and it's got frips on it, and then polished on the sides. And the pontil's pretty nice, and she's calling it Murano. But look, <laughs> this is made, this is the holiday collection, whatever. Made, it clearly says made in China. I, mean, I don't know if that's focusing. I don't know if that's focusing, but that's what it says. <laughs> Hi, hi. Hi, you guys. I'm not looking at chat too much trying to get through this. Oh, hi, Mike. I didn't see you come in. Hi, hi. So um, <laughs> this was $1.59. It's probably worth about $10 to $12 if somebody really loved it. I'm probably going to use this as a booth piece, okay? But it, that's, man, be careful. And see, like, if this didn't have the sticker and you didn't know what you were doing, you would, like, do a reverse image search. And you'd be like, oh, look, there's one. It's a Oh, it's a Murano, and it's worth $30. Oh, that lady doesn't know what she's talking about. So, But it's cute, right? It's cute. So, Okay. This is a nice piece of lead crystal um, candle holder. The sticker was on the bottom, but when I held it to the light, I could see it etching. So I'm like, okay, that's signed. It's only $1.99. We're going to buy it and find out who. Well, it's only Ole Cassini. They... I don't know if you can see the etching. You're not going to be able to. But it's a nice piece of lead crystal, though. So that saves it. So I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> some of these designers lent their name out so much. They just so diffused their own. Okay, who would be a good one? Oh, like Perry Ellis. Is that a good one to say? Anyway, some of them just lent their name out to everything. And then it just waters it down. So there's a good chance that this really isn't worth, I mean, like if that if it said Baccarat or Waterford, that would be yes. Ole Cassini, I don't know. I'll double check. But um <laughs> oh yeah, this piece is Murano Summer so <laughs> made in China. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like you can still go buy these on some websites, new, <laughs> real cheap. But it's a nice chunk of glass and it'll look pretty in the booth and some will some wanna buy it. But anyway, so we'll see. Um, it'll probably end up in the booth because I have a feeling, you know, that it's, it's worth a little bit because of the beautiful nature, you know, of the, you can see it even through here of the lead crystal content. You can tell the difference. See, do I have some cheap glass where you can see the difference? Sure, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. Well, I don't have anything great to compare it to right now, but when you, when you handle enough of it, you'll be like, oh, okay, that's a big difference. Oh, I forgot what this is. I'm going to have to keep this for a while. It's a bullseye. Is that Viking? I can't remember now. Darn it. Um, this is a smaller one. It has good resale value. Oh, Danny, are you here? Hi, hi, everybody. Let me, let's just look it up real quick. I think it's Viking. Viking bullseye. I know it's called bullseye. It might not be Viking though. So let's just. Let 
wool's eye glass candle. I'll put votive. Take off Viking. I don't know, although I feel like it's Viking. Viking, yes, okay. Yeah, there they are. Oh, the minis, let's see. The minis seem to pull 25 to 35, and then the bigger ones, let's see. Viking bullseye comes in different colors. Red is usually a good color, so I am hopeful for this one, but I'm going to clean it up. How much did I pay? $2.99? I'm going to clean it up and keep it for a while in my vintage case, okay? But whenever you see this pattern, that's the bullseye, and it'll be a little bit bigger shape too, okay? Go ahead and get it. Look it up. It's a Viking. If you can't remember Viking, just put like bullseye. Okay, like I just did. So that was a winner. Some paperweights. This is a no name, but it's cute with the little fishy in it. So I can, that's not coming across. Trust me on that. We'll just skip it. Um, this one is signed and I haven't been able to read it yet. This one is signed 1998 and it is gorgeous. I think this is going to be worth more money. My ring light's not helping you guys. Okay, you just want to look for edge signatures on the bottom or on the edge, okay? Some paperweights, uh, it doesn't have to be etched. It can be molded to, it could be a sticker. Um, but some of them are worth money, good money. Even just like Glass Eye Studio, which is kind of common to find with their signature, G-E-S, and maybe an artist's name because they're like a consortium. Even a Glass Eye Studio, you know, small paperweight is 30, 40 bucks. But if you can find something like... Um, Hmm, what's one that's kind of easy? Not too hard to find. He's, a can he's from Canada. Okay, never mind. Let's keep moving. Dollar ninety-nine for a bag full of Murano candy and glass eggs and marble. It's in there. I'm not going to open it up, but look at marbles, okay? Yes, thank you, Audra. That's what I thought I knew too. So I just watched Jocelyn find one. She was so excited. She found the bigger one last week. She was so excited. Okay, so there's a bunch of art glass. Yay. Whew, just a lot. Okay, I kind of separated things. Now, here's some more modern art glass. It could be slightly vintage. These are beautiful coasters. I love them. They're so cool. Very 80s, 90s. Someone will like these. They got some diacrylic glass fees in there. There are four of them. I paid a dollar twenty-nine a piece, but I feel like I'm okay. Nice little silicone, um, you know, legs. And I didn't open these up. Let me see if I can get these open. Cause here's another set. Now this only cost me a dollar ninety-nine for all of them. I actually like these better personally but I you know I can see where someone's gonna like that black and white if someone's into to kind of doing um, an 80s 90s hip hop ish kind of theme you know with it there okay they're all they're not all they're all a little different okay um, they're but along these lines okay with a little diacroic piece of glasses fused in there's four of them they did put the little um, you know feet on there too these are adorable i love these i'm going to put these on ebay because i feel like this is an item that can be pocketed i am so nervous about that you know so we'll see how it goes i might work my way up to not being you know afraid okay let me try to get my middle age body up off this floor okay so let's there's some art glass let's move into <sighs> okay recycle glass because i'm always on the look for um fire and light i've sold all my fire and light i sold my last piece but guess what i got another piece coming i don't really want to talk about it too much because you guys are going to be like how do you do that yvonne and i don't want to tell you because <laughs> you're my competition um but i sniped the piece a fire and light off the internet for she didn't know what it was I don't know why because it said fire and light on it even in one of her pictures so I don't know why she didn't she called it Murano I don't know why she didn't Google 
the fire and light part. She would have, but anyways, I got it. It's coming. I'm going to resell it. So, um, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> so, okay. So I'm always looking at the recycled glass too, because I have found out that some, uh, besides fire and light, which is having an uptick in resale price because they went out of business, right? Because when they first made it, you can go see prices were just, you know, department store prices. They weren't like what they are now. So, um, but anyways, other pieces of recycled glass can sell too. And I'm just guessing, I'm taking a hedge here, that as the collectors that want all their fire and light, I think they're going to reach a point where they might be like, okay, the, here's my fire and light spread, but you know what? This kind of, this recycled piece goes nice too. It appears nice. It looks okay. It's good enough to maybe, you know, have some pieces of it, like maybe in a separate serving. I don't know. You get what I'm saying. Not this in particular, but we're going to get to it. So I've been buying some recycled glass. This is for the booth, of course. Um, this is Stan Miguel, and it's called Vid vidrios anyways you can look it up it's stuff like this sells for 10 20 30 dollars depending on what it is vidrios v-i-d-r-i-o-s if you want to google pieces and this one's by sam miguel and his name pops up a lot but you can buy some of his pieces now at tj maxx so <laughs> you know but some of it does have resale value so i have been buying other pieces that I feel like, in case there's a trend of recycled glass, I've just been buying other pieces, okay? And just to make sure that I don't accidentally miss a one-off piece that escaped um, from fire and light, or maybe like an end-of-day piece, right? Like this one here. This one, like, I could see where this could have totally been an end-of-day puka bowl because they use certain paddle um, patterns on their puka bowls and they were from recycled materials that one's pretty close it's not it but it's pretty close so you can this kind of recycled glass you can find a lot of i've got quite a few pieces of it i think there might come a point when other people might be like okay i want the recycled glass trend but i can't afford fire and light anymore <laughs> because look what happened so you know i've been buying some of this these are my receipts. So I've been picking up some of this when it's cheap enough. So, and I may make a marketing sign in my booth about the beauty of recycled glass, especially if you want to do one of the hashtags like um, urban organic decorating. So that's kind of my thought. This was close. This bottom is close to the... Um, fire and light jewelry cache, but not quite. This is colonial glass, vintage colonial glass. But it's it's so easy to think that this is fire and light because it's smooth on the inside. It's got a warbly textured on the outside. And this is really close to the base of their um, jewelry cache, but it's not. <laughs> okay, I'm getting all this up. So I bought a bunch of little pieces of this kind of stuff. That I'm going to do like um, a faux bougie fire and light display in my um, in my booth and see see if we can pull that off. Let's try it. I want to put this in a box. Then I can slide it out of the way and slide another box in. Bear with me, guys. So here's some fused. This is recycled glass fused. There's two of them here that are painted. Typically, when I find this stuff, it's Peggy Carr and a couple other names I've been finding a lot of. This is not, but always look at this kind of stuff, too, and there'll be a name. If it's one of hers, it'll be a name down there. Her stuff sells, has a pretty decent resale value, and Riverside Designs. I sold some of that just recently. So $1.79 for two pieces, $1.79 for two pieces. So this will... I might put that online because there's I'm finding out there's people that like that. So what do you guys think about my idea of making a little bougie fire and light? Like you can't afford fire and light? Okay. Here's some other recycled glass options. Where's my drink? 
Oh, way over there. Great. Okay, so let's see. Here's some Mexican recycled glass. Surprisingly, some of it is worth money too, you guys. I was really shocked. So I just liked these because they were bent. These are only worth about $10 a piece. But some of the Mexican recycled glass, um, you can get some good resale value too, especially if it's been hand painted, okay? So I'm going to try that for my booth. Like, look at this awesome one. <laughs> this is awesome. I love this one. I need to find out what that's called when you take a string of, of glass, you know, beading and put it around. I need to look that up. Somebody tell me if you already know. Nice little opaque. It's beautiful. This is not painted on. This is um, cased. So that's a nice one. I wish there would have been two. Real pretty iridescent, you guys. And then on recycled glass. Let's see. Those um, came from Pure One Imports. Pure One just went out of business. I wonder if their stuff wind up having the market value like, um, what is it? Not Pure One. Help me, you guys. Oh, Pottery Barn. Because for some reason, Pottery Barn has good resale value. Okay. Yeah, I saw those weren't really reselling for a whole lot. Okay, so there's a bunch of recycled glass. I, I like that idea. Um, this was half price, $2. The only reason I picked this one up, there, there were a whole bunch of them. This is depression glass, right? And I think it's pressed. Um, I don't know, the pencil, or could it be blown in? The pencil's real smooth. This is the kind of stuff I'm not real good at yet. But I liked the canary yellow, so I pulled the yellow one. So... Many of those glasses are 80s, 90s vintage. Yeah. So I don't know how much something like this is worth. I just pulled it because it was the only one that was canary yellow. I never, I always just see them in clear. I tried real hard to find another one, but I just decided I wanted to, to save that one. See, this is vintage glass. Let's just put that here. Another piece of vintage glass. I don't normally do this either, but this is a nice piece of cut glass. So I just really liked the shape of it. What, crackers? I don't know. Just really cute. Yeah, Danny or Danny or George or um, Jocelyn would know right offhand, but this is not my groove. Because normally they don't really bring a whole lot of money. And this one probably not either. I just liked the shape of it. I just wanted to try it. And as well as these. $1.59, $1.59. Yeah, when I just haven't reverse image searched it. I'm sure they're going to pop right up. I'm sure. But these are cute. I just like the shape of those. And just like, like refrigerator glass, like Jeanette or something. Right? But just cute, cheap. Okay. So vintage glass. There. Oh, now this one. This is modern. But I've sold this before. It was actually empty. So this candle company has some has somebody make these for them. You can buy these right now at Ross or TJ Maxx. His name is Antonio Tamaro. Antonio Tamaro Group makes this diffusion line of these glass things for um for this candle. I don't know. Put these candles in it. So it doesn't sell as much as this main line, but I have sold these. I sold one just a couple months ago for around 20-ish, and it was empty. The candle was all burned and cleaned out. So you'll look at it and think it might be vintage. Oh, but why does it have a candle in it? You'll turn it over and go, ah, but it's made in Italy. And if it says Antonio Tomorrow Group, even though it's new and fresh, you can still get some money for this glass. The people that like that, okay? Okie doke. Where are we? Okay, so I've got wood and stone. I did that. I got a bunch of brass. You guys want to look at the brass real quick? $6.99 for this. <laughs> there was another one kind of doing something different, but like that, you know, complimented it. But it was all wobbly, and I just, I didn't think I could fix it. This part was wobbly. Where's Danny? Uh, if that's a Fostoria, then I did well, right? Fostoria is better. Because, you know, it does have, I was like, is this molded? Is this 
whatever. There's something a little better about this. And then they color. If this is Fostoria, that would be great. Because I love Fostoria. I like their heirloom. Fostoria heirloom. Anyways, let me get up, you guys. And I'll pull over this brass. Woohoo. Thanks, Danny. That's not my decorating style. Okay, so that brass, this brass, <laughs> kind of sword. There'll be a specific name for this type. Um, I'll have to see if I can figure it out. This is a wall hanging. I've got a bunch of fish. These were all under $2. A bunch of fish, butterflies. Jesus the Redeemer from Rio de, de Janeiro, if I'm saying it right. Okay, metal on a metal world. And this is, I don't want to say, I'm not good at fake light or anything, celluloid or something. I don't know, but it's cool. Super cool. Religious artifact, the coolness of it. It's just, it was different. So definitely vintage little souvenir piece. I want to try it. And then there's two of these, you guys. Just trust me. Very heavy swan bookends. There's two of them in there. More fishes, more butterflies, a couple of seagulls, wall hangings. They have the hardware. So we'll see what I can get out of this brass while it's still a thing. And some vintage thermometers. And they both said the same thing, so I'm like, well, then they must work, right? Because <laughs> they both said the same, the exact same temperature at the store. So I'm like, oh, okay, they work. These are cool, super heavy. Yeah. Well, it's supposed to be, I mean, you know, there are always people that are fashion forward on styles, so it might take a while for them to, like, you know, be posting their pictures of what they've done and the hashtag to circulate. <laughs> so... You know, and then some people will be like, okay, I think I'll change up, you know, my decorating, add some brass or whatever, or some macrame or whatever it is they want to do. So, I'm not really doing the brass for myself. I wanted something a little different, so, and I started finding those John Perry sculptures, so I kind of went that route. Okay. I'm keeping this for myself. Look, from my jungalow plants to water them. Isn't that cool? So this this is copper that looks like recycled glass. What is the name on it? I can't read it. I can't read the name, but there's a name on it. $349. I think it was half price. I just I'm keeping this for myself, but this is super cute, isn't it, you guys? Super cute. All right, let's get to a different genre now. Oh, here's a Peggy Carr glass piece. It's not fused, but it's painted. This is a Peggy Carr piece. $1.59. It's called Cats. You find sometimes it's painted and then sometimes it's etched. You guys won't be able to see that, but it's etched. You've got to hold stuff up in like different ways to see the etching. I almost missed my first and best fire and light piece, remember? If you watched my fire and light video, you saw that butterfly paperweight. I just wasn't 100% feeling it, but I couldn't put it down. And finally, I held it toward the door of the light, and I just kept, and there it was. But I missed the first three or four times the fine etching fire and light. That piece is what sparked off everything, and that sold for, what, $250, $260? So... Yeah, you just kind of have to hold things up in different angles. So this plate, I think, is worth about 30 this Peggy Carr plate. I've sold her stuff before, her fused with the little flowers and stuff. So <clears throat> let me put that in here. Woohoo! One more metal piece. Yeah, one more metal piece. This is a penguin. I don't know. Uh, seems to be like a thermos. But it's super cute. I know that there's a penguin 
ice bucket, metal ice bucket that for some reason it just keeps it consistently sells for 30, 40 bucks. And so <clears throat> this was $4.99. It's not even that old, but it's super cute. We're gonna give that a try. And there's something in here I want. Okay, this is just for the booth. I would never try to ship this. This looks like a homemade project or you know, one of those places where you paint, you know, pick your green wear and paint it. I don't know. It doesn't always really say a mold on it like Holland or Ar Arnell or anything, but it's pretty thin. I would never this would make me nervous to ship. But it's like a cookie jar. I put saran wrap on it. But she didn't cost very much. She'll she'll go in the booth, okay? But what I'm trying to get to is this. This is a souvenir, smaller replica. Oh, Berlin, Berlin buddies, Berlin bears. I guess this is an art project in Berlin. So, and these are like little replicas. There's different kinds. Buddy bears, Berlin. So different artists painted different bears, and I guess they're huge statues. You can Google it. And so this is someone's choice that they decided to bring back as a souvenir piece or to buy online. It's in great shape. Um, I already Googled it and forgot, but I've saved it on my phone who the artist was that did the original one in this pattern. So I think this sells for about 40-ish. Don't quote me exactly, but Buddy Bears Berlin, and you'll see all the different designs. <laughs> so I paid $5.99. I think it was half price. So it's on a glass stand. So I wanted to show you that. And I think you guys saw me pick up this little shadow box with the paper quilling. Isn't that cute? Paper quilling. It's kind of like paper filigree. So it's only $1.99. It's a cross. It's in a cute kind of... Mm, you know, Victorian, vintage leaning reproduction frame. It's cute. You can set it or you, there's different ways to hang it. It was only $1.99. Some people love paper quilling. So that's why you saw me pick that up. Um, there was something else interesting. Oh, speaking of shadow boxes. $4.99. Was this half price? I can't remember. Look at this shadow box. This is 3D paper, again, of an owl. Isn't that awesome? So this definitely has a vintage vibe. I don't think you would call that paper quilling, of course, because it's not, but it's some kind of 3D paper layering. There'll be a name for it, and I will find out. Quilling is time consuming, I would imagine. Oh my gosh, I would imagine to get that right. Someone's going to love this, exactly love this. I haven't seen any quilling for so long. <laughs> that, someone's going to like that. And it's a cross, too. It's a religious thing. Some vintage acrylic napkin holders, fishes. And this is a name. Hang on. Bijan, U.S. acrylic, made in the United States. There's four acrylic napkin holders. I've been studying vintage resin lucite acrylic there's some money to be made there i found a lucite what started to drop is like that amber lucite hand that i found statue hand about this big i've already got three a list of three people that want it i haven't even determined the value but when i was looking it up i found out that dorothy thorpe did a resin line and so probably that's it wasn't a dorothy thorpe but it was probably made, you know, copycat in that time period when she was probably having success with maybe with some resin. So um, <clears throat> I haven't put a value on it yet, but it's really epic. But that has me, that just set me down a rabbit hole of lucite acrylic because we know the lucite purses and the lucite and acrylic furniture, like that stuff is just crazy prices. So I wanted to learn, well, what else is there that I might actually find? Because I see a lot of that kind of stuff at the thrift stores, but I never pick it up, right? So we're going to try these. because These are vintage, definitely. Um, you guys, let's take a 30-second break. i got to get up very carefully, go get a drink. <clears throat> I've been talking, talking. 
we actually might get through this. We we're almost done. We actually might get through this before we still have an hour before Jocelyn goes on. Okay, you guys, let's take an intermission. Okay, go get yourself a drink too. <laughs> I'll be right. I'm just gonna carefully go get my orange juice over there, and it's gonna take me a minute to get up because I've been on my knees. Oh my gosh, yeah, I'm too old for that business. Be right back. I gotta move carefully so I don't break anything. It's just right over here. Yes. Okay, that's going to feel better. Oh, I might as well grab this. I had it tucked away. Because I'm still working on it. I just bought this. Let me show it to you though. It's epic. Woo, that's better, y'all. Okay. <laughs> I'm never going to let it pile up like this again, you guys. This is insane. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hi, hi. Um, Crazy Lamp Lady, okay? Are you watching Crazy Lamp Lady? If you like vintage stuff, you definitely want to add Great Jocelyn and Drew to your, you know, YouTube. Oh my gosh. Anyways, we finally talked her into doing lives and she's kind of been leaning into it. She's been committing to every Thursday when she can. So Danny will probably be over there too. We help her mod. Okay, so. Let me let me break before we carry on because I just got this the other day and I put it on Instagram and I because I you know I'm like okay I'm gonna do this you guys but look what I found today and a couple people are already helping me with it I haven't even started on it I'll let Yvonne answer that okay I'm not sure what you want me to answer okay anyways um look at this awesome plate we're leaning so far toward i don't think i'm going to say this right verley's v-e-r-l-y-s but i'm not sold on it just yet so i'm going to do more research i didn't take time today because i'm like i'm going i've been promising this haul forever let's get it done this is very heavy it's 3d with the fish is I call them carp, but I think we're supposed to say koi fish. Let me get the flashlight. You guys, this piece is amazing. $349. It's going to be hard to sell. I know it's going to end up being something. Let me see if I can figure out how to. There, that helps a little bit, right? Can you see how it's, it's like a grayish glass? So heavy. Can you believe they only priced this $3.49? Whew. So, you see how it's, see, this is all 3D relief on the bottom. Okay. Oh, where am I going to put this, sweetie? Because it's got to be safe. We're going to stick it in between there. That's going to be something. Okay. Now, this thing, I, I'm sorry. When I saw this, thank God for watching people like the Antique Nomad and Jocelyn because this is not my style. This is not my aesthetic. And um, when you look at it, it look the paint job's not great, you guys. And it just looks like one of those, you know, pick your greenware ceramic and go sit down, have a glass of wine and paint it. There's only like two colors on here. But it was that handle. It was that dog. The way that it was so elegantly formed. I'm like, but there's something different about this. Oh, yes, I know, Charlotte. That fish piece reminds me of, um, that's what, like, George answered me, was one of the first people that answered me. And I said, you know, it's not coming across in the pictures. I'll send you better pictures. I'm like, it's not as beautiful as Lalique or Sabino, but it's not your run-of-the-mill glass by any means. Okay, so back to this. 
So when I turned it over and I'm like, oh, and someone put felt on it. Now, not always, but some of us know that's usually indicative of potential vintageness, right? So um, if it weren't, if it weren't for the awesomeness of this dog, like the lines, I would never have done it, but I'm glad I did. So it was half price, $2.50. I'm going to pull it up. That is actually an antique. I don't find a lot of antiques, only a few. If you saw me in um, Dom Primetime Treasure Hunters Thrift Battle the other week against Joey Bada Bing, I pulled out a couple of antiques, and that's how I won. Phew. That was close because he pulled out this big, he pulled out this gigantic cast iron skillet. I wasn't expecting that. I knew he was going to hit me with a sports card that I was going to have to have something epic prepared for that. But when he pulled out this humongous, it wasn't even a Griswold, but it was pretty epic cast iron skillet. I was like, even my girl, Lindy, who was there said, I, Yvonne, love you, but I got to vote for the skillet. <laughs> so anyways, let me pull this up. Because I want you, because some of you might be feeling me on this. Like, I, I know what you're saying, Yvonne. Like, I, that's just not cool at all. So, but let me go find the pictures so I can show you the name on a worth a point. This thing is worth well over $100. Worth point? No, that's not worth point. Someone has it suggested 165 but um, same color and everything. Let this focus. So there it is. Now, hang on. I'm going to switch because I've got the name to show you. Rockingham Bennington Hound Handle Game Hunt Picture. This famous picture was produced in the 19th century, circa 1850, late 19th century. Um, it is handcrafted and painted in browns, rust, goldenrod, caramel, and burnt sienna, and finished with the famous Rockingham glaze. So Rockingham Bennington Hound Handle Game Unit Pitcher. <laughs> so that's what this is. I don't know if you'll be able to read that, but uh, you're not going to be able to read that. But do you understand what I'm saying? I really want you to take a good look at this. Rockingham Bennington. Write that down and go learn about it now like I did because I would have totally dismissed this. Something in my gut, thank goodness, didn't let me. And this is worth well over $100 and it's an antique. I cannot believe, okay, one little tiny doink. I mean, it's nothing. One little tiny thing right there. I've got, I've been keeping this wrapped up, y'all. <laughs> I've been keeping that wrapped up. Um, some little boudoir, some little boudoir, like candle, you know, candle things. Now they're missing some of their, what are those called, you guys? Crystal dangles. I've got a whole bag of those that I found that I just hadn't put up for sale yet. Thank goodness. So I will replace those. These are adorable. So. I'm pretty sure these are vintage and not knockoffs. I'm just judging by the glass and the hardware. I paid $2.49 a piece. So that's cute, isn't it? Those are cute. Okay, so yay. You guys want to see something unique too? This is crazy. Still in the box. Pearl rose preserved and dipped in 14 karat gold. I paid half price. The name must be on the inside. Steven Singer Jewelers. I don't know. I guess it's a gift. But I noticed it had some resale value. And this one's in really good shape. Look. Isn't that awesome? A gold-dipped rose. Still in the box. Good shape. And when I looked it up, let's see. Preserved and dipped in 14 karat gold. Steven Singer Jewelers. <coughs> It has some resale value. So it's got some weight to it, too, you guys. Isn't that adorable and precious? I know. Pick with joy. My thrift stores have been on fire. Oh, let me tell you something. 
my thrift store has been on fire. It, I, like, I can't even get to all of it. Guess who's coming next week? Danny, are you still here? Because I meant to tell you this. I just We just solidified it. George is going to come. He's We had plans because there was a table he was going to drop off to somebody that he sold. He sold a table to somebody in Denver. And so we've always had plans, you know, to meet up. But then the pandemic and, you know, the lockdown and everything. Well, he's finally... He's out shopping now at some highway sales. We all know that from watching him last night. And then he's going to leave next week and uh, he'll be here next Wednesday. No, next Tuesday evening. We're going to get up early. He only has about four or five hours and we're going to hit a couple places. And then he's going to go on to Seattle to take care of business. He told us all that last night. And so then hopefully on the way back in November, he's going to plan to stay longer and that's what I'm going to say. Hey, can you like, I'm going to meet him in Denver next week because we only have like four hours. And I think we should just go to an antique mall, the brass armadillo. Um, and so we can film and I can watch how he works and everything. But then on the way back, then when he comes back in November, I'm going to try to get him to stay because he knows my thrift stores are on fire and to come on down to the Springs and I'll, I will take him to all my best thrift stores and, you know, and see what he can pull out, um, you know, to add to his, inventory because I can't even like I have so many thrift stores and I only get to about the same four or five or six of them because then I run out of time and energy and look what's happening to me so, and I used to have my daughter help me but with the pandemic I can't nobody comes into my house it doesn't live here um she's been allowed to come in and use the bathroom but because I am a caretaker for my elderly father you guys he's in his late 70s He's so susceptible. I can't, you know, I can't risk it for him. Like younger people have a little bit stronger immune system. And so, you know, they like could combine it better. But if my dad were to get it, th that's just not going to be good. And then probably I would get it. So I've been really diligent about it. Um, so I don't have, a, you know, nobody can help me right now. All right, let's pause for a second before we move on. What we got? We got 50 minutes left. Hi from Turkey. Um, the niche lady, you're in green. What? Did you? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Danny, did you join? <laughs> okay. You know what? I didn't even talk about that. I didn't even talk about that. Oh, you are so sweet. Oh, my gosh, Danny. I didn't even talk about it. The only reason I even opened it up is because and I put it for the minimum, 99 cents, because I kind of viewed it like eBay, you know, when eBay has all these tricks and features, you know, we always wonder, do you get preferential treatment if you use them? All their bells and whistles, right? You know, a lot of us, excuse me, talk about that. And so I applied the same logic to YouTube. When YouTube rolls stuff out, I ignored it. I ignored it at first. Like they, they sent it out to me in April. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not charging people more money. It's ridiculous. But anyways, um, but then I started thinking about it. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm going to apply the same logic and use all the bells and whistles. So um, so I set it up a couple weeks ago. I didn't even talk about it. I added a few little things, and I set it for the lowest possible. And, like, I don't really, you know, that's sweet. If you guys do that, that's sweet. But seriously, all that can add up at the end of the month. But I just wanted YouTube to be like, oh, let's promote Yvonne because look, she uses all of our bells and whistles. Okay, so let's carry on. Uh, one more thing I want to address before we move on. <clears throat> Danny, this next Wednesday won't be good. We only have like four hours and more might come or might not. But when he comes back through in November, if I can get him to stay a couple more days, I will definitely give you a heads up, okay, on that one. Because that will be, um, the boys are back. That will be thrift store hopping, like power thrifting, okay? What does Deanna say? I've come down to your thrift stores. I must have come the wrong days. I haven't found much. I'm much more successful around home in Denver. I'll be hitting Denver if I could ever, like, I just find so much right here. I know Denver's good too, though. I know it is. I know I'm missing some good stuff, but that's okay. All right, let's keep moving before you run out of time. Here's something y'all can help me with. This is, I just knew it was super cool. 
haven't worked with it, I will. But in the meantime, before I do, it says it was made in Vietnam and it's got something on it that I just cannot read. I'll work on it sometime in the next couple of weeks, but it's super cool ashtray. You come in slow, very heavy. It says made in Vietnam. Isn't that cool? This textured enamel, two little, I don't want to say geisha because this is Vietnam. So I'm not sure. You won't be able to read it up close, but I'll show it to you because it might, you might be so familiar that you're like, I can just tell by the outline what that is, Yvonne. Okay. So I think this is pretty epic. I think this should do well once I figure out what this little vintage item is for $2. Along that line, I got this. Some of you saw me get this. What was it? $7.99. And this particular one, I'm going to guess, I'm thinking this is this is really nice one, you guys. About 50 bucks at least. And it's musical. It still works. It's not chipped. These black lacquer Asian jewelry boxes do resell. I remember my grandmother having one and I inherited it. I think she got it from my Uncle Bert when he was in the Marines or some kind of military. This one's in really good shape. The music box works. No major nicks or missing abalone. Abalone, abalone. Normally these are a hot mess when you see them. This one isn't that stunning. This one is pretty epic. And a lot of times they're like that red, it's kind of like red painting inlay. This one's just way better. Let's see, did you auction your fire? And yes, they're all, I sold my last one. I made a lot of money, Audra. I sold my last one last week. I don't even know if she's gotten it yet. It just went out a few days ago. But I sniped another piece. I haven't found any in the wild, but I sniped the piece. <clears throat> should be coming any day then i'm going to resell somebody didn't know she should have known what it was but she didn't okay these little sauce bowls are slightly vintage i'm, I'm keeping with the asian theme lacquerware alcohol and stain proof japan these are nancy calhoun designs and her home goods you won't be able to read that but there's a sticker her home goods um, have some resale value so these little lacquerware sauce dishes soy put your chopsticks in i don't know they're actually worth some money i can't remember exactly now but they were mine i've had them for years ah where's my i got it bye bye not today okay and then when I was doing research on the jewelry box and I found out about lacquerware and stuff, wasabi, wasabi, um, I was like, oh, there's something else that I bought at the thrift store years ago and didn't even know it had interesting resale value more than I love it, you know, more than I love it. So one more thing. Now, some of you saw me talk about this. This was um, about $3.50. It has a sticker on it made in Japan. I just got this. This, I, it looks like something brand new, right? Like even from Big Lots or something. It's like got transferware on it, like rock pat, a marble rock pattern. But there's one thing I know about some Japanese art with this modernist, um, you know, vibe to it. So I'm like with all these angles and this modernist, I mean, there's something about shapes, the angles that are very important in some you know japanese art so i'm like you need to give this a try i know i would want to say 80s i'm a little perplexed audra because see the blue japan sticker so i need to familiarize myself again with the dates on that color of sticker anyways we're going to give this a try because i really think this is something i'm reading chat sorry you guys yeah. Thank you, humble thrifter crafter. I couldn't imagine a whole big dress um, 
dressing, like dressing table. Okay, and one more lacquer piece. This is Vietnam, but I was thinking, you know, not to be morbid, but urns, urns can be like, urns are a very special thing, right? And um, not picked out lightly. This could very well serve as a nice urn. This is really pretty lacquer piece. You, I don't know if you can see it, but the silver and gold foil underneath the lacquer is just stunning. It's got cranes on it. Like it's not coming across. Some of it is just paint, but some of it is foil, like foil. And it's just so metallic and beautiful. Let's try again. You can see the moon. See that ombre foil? And the swans have some ombre foil on it. It is beautiful. Once again, in great shape. Made in Vietnam. So I'm hoping... My thought was even if it's, I don't feel like it's recent because made in Vietnam, but even if it is, I'm like, some things are just beautiful. And when you can think of a unique function for them too, um, I feel like it just has resale value. We'll see what happens. All right. So there's some of the eight cool Asian stuff that I freaked out over. Oops. Oh, a couple more modern bases. Is this cool though? Look, it's just cool. Modern art is really a thing for some people. I understand what you're saying, Audra. I totally understand what you're saying because if that's not what they want, that's gonna freak them out when they would have probably bought it for something else. And then they're gonna be like, oh wait. <laughs> so so uh, I think this is a booth item, just cool. I just want to double check that this is a by some cool modern artist that just didn't sign their piece. It's really heavy and cool. I like that technique on it. <clears throat> this is a, um, a diffusion line, okay? Now, this is Michael's. This is modern. Made in China, even. Michael Graves. I don't know if you can see that in there. Michael Graves. This is ceramic. Yes, this one's glass. Gorgeous. Weighs about five pounds. This is ceramic. Michael Graves, though, um, is it Target? I think this collab is at Target. But this base right here resells for about 25 to 30. And what really resells well from this person, this is more of a diffusion line, okay? Like you can't afford his real stuff, but there's a, you know, like some of the, clothing people do at Target, like they'll do a one-off, what, Lily Pulitzer did it, Hunter did it, uh, you know, lots of people do that, this limited edition, one-time, special, you know, cheaper fabrics maybe, special designs, and it'll be like the designer name and then for Target. I think even Miss Missoni did it for that. Anyways, that's kind of what's going on here. But what really is mind-blowing are his teapots. Yes. So if you like that kind of thing, and teapots are always so plentiful at the thrift store, um, metal teapots. <clears throat> so you might want to go take a look on eBay at Michael Graves teapots, like resale value, 60, 70, $80. It's really weird. Yeah, minimalist, huh? <laughs> so I'm not sure how I knew. I just had that. I just know, you know, modern art stuff sells too. And so I picked it up. I recognized the name. All right. Mermaids. I sell mugs. I find some Scott Wiley mugs, and this matches exactly. So although it's not his, so I'm totally confused. I don't know if he, this one says, um, I don't know if he did a line of mugs for these people or what. Ronnie's Ceramic Company, made in San Francisco, USA hand-painted airbrush, but this is exactly like Scott Wiley um, mugs that are like the tail will be a handle, maybe inside is a dolphin, or inside the mug is another tail. I've got a couple for sale now, and I've sold them in the past, so I felt like, okay, somebody's going to want this. This matches exactly. Anyways, I'm moving into mermaid, okay? <laughs> 
So I was shocked. Um, this was with the soap dishes, and it was like a dollar ninety nine. And when I peeled it back, it's got a Japan, not made in Japan, just a Japan blue sticker. There's a difference, made in Japan, Japan. And I, I was a little shocked because it really, um, I mean, it's, look, it looks. If you somebody would have said, you know, this was at Big Lots, I would believe them. But it does have a Japan sticker in it. Mm, the ceramic, I don't know what to say about this, but for $1.99, I'm going to save a mermaid. That's all That's that's all I can say. I'm going to save a mermaid. So, more mermaids I saved. This is somewhat of a retro Mattel mermaid. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's an ornament or what. But I haven't seen these very often, so I picked it up. Barbie mermaid. It says Mattel. And... Uh, I just picked it up. We're gonna see what happens. A little vintage bisque mermaid bell. I don't know whose it is yet, but it's definitely vintage. And she's too cute. Mermaids are still trending again. This is the second time in my lifetime. So uh -huh. pick that up. Now this one I can't sell. I'm not much of a drinker, so I don't know how I would get one, but this is from Las Vegas Treasure Island. So unless Danny found me one at her thrift stores, I don't know how I would ever get one. You can resell these for about $15, $20. It's a mermaid souvenir cup, probably when you ordered some kind of big drink <laughs> from Treasure Island. <laughs> but look, mermaid tail. There she is, 3D relief. Can you see how awesome it is? So I can't tell you I'm not good enough yet on that kind of thing, Fern, to tell you, but there's a difference. There is a difference. There's a difference between Japan, made in Japan, occupied Japan. I'm not sure when it comes to the stickers versus the printing. I'm just smart enough to know that I need to find out on items before I make a decision on pricing, okay? So she's mine. She's mine, you guys. And just for fun, so is this UFO mug. <laughs> so, okay, just for fun. All right, let's see. Da, 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 da. A bunch of clothing. We'll skip clothing for another day. <clears throat> this is not Mexican. This is Indian, and it's Navajo. I just sold a piece of this. I don't know if you'll be able to read that. I can't say that name. It says something Navajo, USA. I just sold a big chip and dip set from this. Um I'm getting pretty good at knowing what's the Mexican pottery and what's more the hieroglyphics or whatever, the patterns, the icons or whatever are um, Indian. So I recognize this one too and uh, I'm going to put it up for sale. I think the chip set by this exact same Navajo artist was about 30 or 35. It went out a couple weeks ago. So. The patterns are different. They're different than the Mexican and the like tonalis type stuff, you guys. These raku type plates, they don't look like much, but they are. On the back, they'll be signed J. Diller. Sometimes in this gold Sharpie. This is a new way I've never seen. Let me peel this back. The first one I ever found from her, I kept. It's in my vintage wall. This one looks like it was just stamped in a scribble. But she has a little bit of following with her wares, okay? So it this looks like something somebody made and signed themselves, which she did, but it's a thing, okay? She's got a following, she or he. Jay Diller. <clears throat> Whew, I'm getting a little tired. All right, we're going to wrap this up soon. I bought a bunch of these. They weren't very much. I bought a bunch of these little fur animals. I think I'm going to put all of these. There's just a bunch of them, you guys. They're adorable, though. I'm going to put all of these um, in the booth. There are a whole bunch of them. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's not. And um, the one that I have in my wall, which was the first one that I found, has three birds on it. It's so cute. It's this size um, with the, like, Raku finish like the oil spill look on it. I love it. 
And that's how I found out about it. I bought that for myself and just did research. And that's how I found out. Okay, so lots of animals. Lots of animals. These are good for the booth. There's a taxidermy <laughs> caiman or <a> crocodile. <laughs> These actually have some value. This is a leather um, tiger. And um, it's leather is why. And because of the size. Not worth a whole lot, but a little bit more because of the size on this guy. So I've got a bunch of critters that will be going. And one more. There's a couple. I got a bunch of wood stuff, okay? Just a bunch of cute wood stuff. This I'm going to put online. This is cute. Just some kitschy stuff that people might like. Okay. This is beautiful. A lot of wood stuff. Didn't pay very much. Some of you saw me find it. This I love. I just got this. $3.99. This is an inkwell. Look. An inkwell made out of wood. And there's the quill. It could use a new quill. That is so cute. On eBay, they mermaid dishes up for sale for 75 And so which one? Not this. This? Really? Charlotte, this? Soap dish? Or I did, this one that I'm keeping for myself that I found what, last month, this Summit Collection one. This is not real vintage, but these sell. Summit Collection, Arcadia, California. But this particular mermaid plate sells for about 30 or 40. I'm keeping this one. It's heavy. Very heavy. Okay, we need to wrap this up. Another Raku piece. This is a cross. I paid $1.79. It's signed J. Diller again. Raku cross signed by J. Diller. Girl, really? Okay, thanks. Because I haven't worked with some of this stuff. I will double check that. Awesome. This is cool, isn't it? Someone just got rid of all their Jay Diller stuff, which I don't know why, because it's awesome. So I have a lot of unique wood items for a wood section, okay? just I just picked out unique items for a, a nice wood section, too. Well, you guys, that was a lot. We got through most of it except for a bag full of the coolest clothing ever. Oh my gosh, a Kuji sweater, Gunny Stack, Free People, Citron. We'll, we'll do that maybe sometime this weekend because I'm going to get something to eat, refresh myself because, um, you know, it's almost time for Jocelyn and we don't want to miss that, right? See, there's a notification right there, five o'clock. So good stuff, right? So if you're watching this, later or if you came in late just like you know you can fast forward these there's a little dot there's a little um cog fast forward i watch a lot of people on fast forward and you can still see and hear everything okay so you guys there's some little tidbits here and there i didn't show but you know some coolness some metal art see just some things that i think are cool no special names to them. I got a lot of stoneware and wood, you know, for a section like that in my booth. You guys, any of you that want to follow me, we're going to do that together. We're going to build the booth together, okay? So you guys will see my process on that. Woohoo! Anyways, tons of art glass in the beginning. If you came in late, you missed all the epic art glass. Ah. Okay, I hope I never have to do this again. I'm going to be more diligent about doing these in a timely manner because sitting on the floor is hard. <laughs> cool stuff, right? There's some things I didn't show you guys. I'll set it aside and add it with the clothing and we'll do that. There's some, you know, just some cool unique pieces. But I got some money. I got some money laying around here for sure. And definitely some fun stuff. You guys, I'm going to get something to eat, feed my husband. Oh, hi, Mike. Um, so... Oh, um, Nurse J-Lo, when am I doing it? I'm going to start to talk next week about a space because they price them according to location and size, okay? But I will document that. <clears throat> Anyways, oh, this is cool too as far as wooden pieces. Anyways, you guys, let's meet up again about 5 o'clock. Hi, Fran, uh, over at Crazy Lamp Lady's channel, okay? 
because she found some fire and light. Let's, I hope she shows it tonight and let's see what else she found, okay? So I'll be there. I'm sure Danny will be there. I'm sure some of you people will be there in the side chat. So I'll see you in about half an hour over on her channel. All right, guys. Bye-bye. Over and out. <laughs> and broadcast. All right, you guys. I'll see you in about half an hour.